All right, Sam, thanks a lot. Standing by with Winnie Connections here of Father Patrick. Driver Yannick Gingra, co-owner in the Father Patrick stable, Mr. George Siegel. And we'll start with you, Yannick. Uh, Father Patrick tonight, just a big mile. You were patient early on, moved into the lead down the back stretch. Yeah, I just want to take it easy. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's been a long year already, even though he's been doing it easy. And there's a couple more starts and um, try to say something the next couple weeks and for next year as well. Now, you've driven a lot of great young trotters, no doubt about that. Father Patrick, though, he has a rank right at the top of that list. Well, nothing like him. You know, I mean, nothing even close to him. I mean, uh, he's a very, very special horse. Um, you know, I haven't turned him loose yet, you know what I mean? And uh, he, he can he can go so fast, it's scary. Now, you mentioned to us on the pregame show that you actually hadn't kicked out the plugs for the last five starts. I'm assuming we've ran that streak up to six. Oh, yeah, he didn't kick him out tonight either. And uh, I mean, I'm, sitting, uh, I'm sitting on some more. I'm not sure exactly how much. And uh, like I said, I don't want to find out. And uh, unfortunately, he won't be joining us here next week in Grand Circuit Action. Trainer Jimmy Tacker said he was pointed next to the Breeders' Crown. We expect him to go a big mile there. I'm sure Pocono as well. Hopefully, uh, he wins in 57. I'm, I'll be okay with that. Well, great deal. Best of luck moving forward. We're also going to get a comment here from uh, co-owner, Mr. George Siegel of the Father Patrick Stable. And uh, George, talk to us about this. Uh, Colt has to be quite a blessing. You've had plenty of great youngsters, but he ranks right there at the top. Absolutely. Not only owning them, but breeding them. Yeah, that sounds like a great accomplishment as well. And he's now eight for nine in his career. Got a full brother out there at the sale, Hip 80. Uh, he's a great-looking horse. Uh, a lot of people have seen him. Uh, keep your fingers crossed. Well, he'll certainly be uh, some excitement there to watch him go through the uh, sales ring. I'm sure you're looking forward to that as well. And now talk to us about tomorrow night, of course, the captain in action right here at the Red Mile. We've got to be expecting a big effort from him. Well, I expect him to perform well. Uh, I don't get excited about times and how fast they go. Uh, he's got uh, four races in a row coming up here next week, the second race, and then Pocono two races. Uh, these are all big races, Breeders' Crown. And talk, talk about the decision there. I know that was kind of a uh, game-time decision. You guys were maybe going to the jug, decided to skip that at the last minute, but things certainly worked out well with that uh, nice uh, tighter there up at Hoosier. Uh, we talked about going to the jug. It has nothing to do with really the jug. Uh, we wanted to look at the long run, the horse racing the rest of the year, possibly racing at the Meadowlands in the uh, race against aged horses if he's able to win the Breeders' Crown, and then racing next year. Took everything into consideration and doing what's best for the horse. Well, no doubt about that, and as you mentioned, he's got uh, four tough starts coming up here in a row, and that's going to start with tomorrow night right here. Captain Treacherous in action. We're all looking forward to that, and we're going to send it back upstairs to you, Sam.